Now, there have always been threats to children. In every society, there are people like this. And every society deals with them swiftly and very harshly. Let's spare the outrage here and just be real about it. Which what are you is, talking about? He, this she put her head between his legs. Fox News host Tucker Carlson, who absolutely, definitely, for sure, cares about kids in the classroom, more on that later, turned an overtly ridiculous story into a call for violence against teachers. So I'm going to break down his uh, segment from last night and show you a clip from a few years ago with a very different perspective from Tucker Carlson. Again, more on that later. But it all begins with uh, this. Oakville teacher shocks students by wearing huge prosthetic breasts to shock class. So this is a teacher in Oakville, Ontario, Canada. Apparently a trans teacher, I happen to think, this is my personal opinion, doesn't mean I'm right, I could be definitely wrong, I think this is an anti-trans troll. That said, maybe it's not. So regardless, as I'm going to get to this first clip here, Tucker uses this one overtly ridiculous example to paint an entire group of people as predators and extremists. Meanwhile, conservatives are literally stripping people of their rights while holding others back from getting any. But let me start with this first clip from Tucker's segment. So this week, video surfaced on the internet from a place called Trafalgar High School in Oakville, Ontario. That's right across the lake from Niagara Falls. These videos show a teacher called Stephen Hanna, who apparently has been employed at Trafalgar High for several years. Recently, Hanna decided to dress like a woman, or more precisely, as a grotesque caricature of a woman, not a real woman, but a kind of pneumatically inflated Marilyn Monroe lookalike. As part of his costume, Hannah strapped on a pair of gigantic prosthetic breasts, each the size of a 10-pound watermelon. We're not exaggerating here. They're visible from at least 100 yards away, if not from space. We'll show you the picture we are right now on the screen. But here's the thing. Hannah isn't doing this in private, in his home, in restaurants, and clubs. If he were, we would not be mentioning on the show because it would not be our business. Have fun, Stephen Hannah. No. Stephen Hanna is doing it in class, in front of children. As the Canadian journalist Jonathan Kay put it, Hannah has been dressing like this for a while, but only recently have students within the school gone public with this fact. So they've been enduring this for a while. Kay also notes that Hannah's costume is based on the style of Japanese internet pornography, which translates roughly into English as exploding milk porn. All right, so that's a good place to uh, pause. I'll get to more on this in a minute. But first, I want to break down exactly how Tucker grabs people in, because it is all there in that initial... I mean, this is the beginning of a segment. He knows how to do this. He starts by getting viewers on board using overtly ridiculous imagery. I mean, this is going to stop anybody in their tracks to wonder what the hell's going on here. And look, just on this story alone, yes, this is clearly distracting. I think this obviously is going to distract students. Um... I don't know. Again, there's very little known right now about this teacher. I don't really want to get into their personal life. This is a private citizen. I don't need to do that. Uh, and I could be wrong again, again uh, about them being, um, you know, just a troll here. But regardless, Tucker uses that imagery to grab people in, then uses comedy. Like uh, <laughs> you can see them from space, like, <laughs> you know, lines like that to then again, to allow people to, to sort of open up to his ideas. Comedy is a great way to get people into information. So he does that as well. He attempts to seem reasonable by discussing how, oh, if this person is doing this in private, I wouldn't cover this. Who would care? So again, these attempts here to try and grab as many people in as possible by seeing, uh, seeming reasonable, being uh, comedic, getting this uh, very um, uh, uh, distractive or distracting imagery. And then also attempts to be... <laughs> memeable here by bringing up exploding milk porn like tucker just saying exploding milk porn alone that clip is now you know going viral so he he knows how to generate an audience he knows how to grab people in uh, initially on, on on his initial premise to then bring them in to what he is trying to argue so that's where we get to this next clip now there have always been threats to children in every society there are people like this and every society deals with them swiftly and very harshly, but no longer in the West. Now, people like this are not punished. They are celebrated and then protected. It's hard to believe this is happening, but we're sad to tell you it's not just happening in Canada. You see versions of it everywhere, including in this country. And to be clear what this is, children being used as props 
in the sexual fantasies of adults. Children being used as props in the sexual fantasies of adults. Are you okay with that? Is any normal person okay with that? It's completely wrong. It's utterly outside the bounds of what's acceptable. It's not a close call. And yet suddenly teachers, licensed teachers, are bragging about it on social media. I have had multiple students come out to me, not just with their sexuality, but also with their gender identity. It's one of the reasons I think it's so important to be out and loud and proud. I teach my elementary school students about gender identity. Some people are girls, some are boys, some are both, some are neither. I might tell this kid, we do have a flag in the class that you can pledge your allegiance to. And he like looks around and he goes, oh, that one? So again, if you were walking through the park with your kids and a stranger came up and started talking to them, say to your fifth grader, your five-year-old, or even your 14-year-old about sex, what would you do? Well, you would call the police, of course. That's not allowed. It's a crime because they're children. But teachers are allowed to do it and then to brag about it. Ah, uh, yes. Tucker is very worried about kids in the classroom, what they are being exposed to, what teachers are doing to them. We'll get to a very different Tucker from 2014. But first, on his points here, look, he, he starts off by saying, uh, people like this are not punished, while talking about the, the shop teacher. People like this. People like what? People that wear giant prosthetic breasts to class? <laughs> you found one of them. You had to go to Canada to find one. People like this, he's talking about trans people. He's using this one overtly ridiculous example to try and paint the entire community as somehow predators or uh, disgusting extremist individuals. When it's a teacher in a shop class, yes, the breasts are a little distracting, but, you know, the, it's not like the teacher's even having discussions about sex in class. It, it's a shop teacher. But he uses that to try and make a bigger point and fear monger about teachers at large that discuss just identity and orientation, which is not inherently sexual. If I say, hey, I'm a man, are we having a conversation about sex? No, that's how I identify. I am a man, gender identity. Why would that be a conversation about sex? It isn't. But Tucker connects, he attempts to connect identity and even orientation, who you're attracted to. It doesn't mean you're having a conversation automatically about sex. But he tries to attach these things to the most perverse ideas that people have of sex and claim that teachers are having those conversations with kids when it's simply about identity and orientation and allowing kids to be who they are. Teachers accept, accepting and respecting their students, that is somehow supposed to scare you. It really is disgusting what he does, and he does it very successfully because of, as I showed you at the beginning, how he reels people in to then essentially move them down this pipeline to become more extremist and become anti-trans, anti-LGBTQ. It's gross. But here is a very different Tucker back in 2014. Remember, he's very worried about what teachers are doing to kids in the classroom. Can't wear prosthetic breasts. It's not good for the boys. Well, let's see what he said back in 2014. This female teacher in Texas is in big trouble after allegedly giving one of her students a bizarre birthday present, or unusual one anyway, a lap dance in front of the entire class. Mm. Alicia Smith, pictured on the screen, accused of grinding on the 15-year-old, putting her head between his legs and fondling him. Oh. Smith reportedly admits to doing all this, but only after the rest of the class, she says, convinced her to. Okay. So, you know, I, I think legitimate opinion divides whether this was appropriate for the classroom or not. But there, are people, but there are people. Out, hold on, slow. Let me finish. There are people out there who believe that there ought to be criminal sanctions brought against this I, woman, I, I, and know, I think that's deranged. So what? if the class had because tried there's to, no there's no victim here. If the class had tried to convict her uh, or convince her of committing a crime like killing somebody, which you've done it to. But this isn't I mean, a crime. That's the does, point I'm making. A crime class... suggests a victim and no one here is a victim. What do you no mean there's no victim, though? There's a 15 year old oh kid, and then you have a grown no. up teacher. There's a 15 year old boy. 15 and so it's, having been a 15-year-old boy, I can tell you, 
Unless there's something we don't know about this, this kid's life is not been I have He's taught 15 year old boys. I assure you they are still kids. This is the they dream may be laughing, but boys. I assure you. I mean, you're okay, not embarrassed? So, well, no, I'm not, look, I'm not saying I, I want this going on in my kid's school. I'm just saying. Let's spare the outrage here and just be real about it. Which what are you is, talking about? He put, she put her head between his legs. Okay, she, she was, a, you know, acting out a lap dance. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> just acting out a lap dance, her head between his legs. That, no big deal, but wearing prosthetic breasts to class. Oh, very dangerous, very dangerous. Look, and, and I'm, not, I'm not even trying to claim here that... There shouldn't be something done about the attire that certain people wear to class. You probably can't wear a giant prosthetic penis under your pants that's protruding out of your <laughs> jeans to class. So, you know, this isn't all that different. That said, the hypocrisy here <laughs> is so glaring, so clear. This shows you that he has no principles. He doesn't give a shit. Whatever works for his narrative, whatever is working for him currently, and this is working for him, being this horribly bigoted, disgusting individual and reeling people into this mindset. This currently is working for him. Number one in the ratings. So he continues it, continues the garbage, despite what he said years ago about having no issues with uh, a lap dance in the classroom. And credit here to Parker Malloy, who uh, dug this clip up and also brought up this as well. Here's Tuck Carlson in 2006 defending Warren Jeffs arranging child marriages. Yes, you can read through this yourself if you want. Tucker defending child marriages, a guy who committed or, or who um, who arranged child marriages. Now, one last clip here. Um, this is the end of his segment. Believe it or not, there's more. <laughs> there's more to that initial segment. Here, he eventually, as I said, ties it into a call for violence. You can't say the true things. You can claim the earth is flat and no one gets exercise. But when you start saying things like all lives matter or sexualizing my children is a crime and if you keep it up i'm gonna hurt you because i'm the dad say that Ooh, you're done what you're seeing is a society that hates children you would have to hate children in order to sexualize them because sexualizing children screws them up for life ask anyone to whom it's happened period no one should put up with this no parent should put up with this for one second no matter what the law says your duty your moral duty is to defend your children. This is an attack on your children, and you should fight back. No parent should put up with this. You should fight back. This is an attack on your children. This is a clear and obvious call for violence. This is what Tucker does on a consistent basis. This is what he has done a number of times. In fact, I'll show you some examples. First here from uh, Nikki. It's the way Tucker transitions from a very explicitly inappropriate incident to accusing run-of-the-mill teachers who are simply out or inclusive of using kids as props in sexual fantasies that's going to get teachers harmed. Ari Drennan here says this is the fourth time this year that Tucker Carlson, who has the most watched show on Fox News, has told his viewers that they should assault teachers. Here he is back in March. Teachers who talk to kids about gender identity should be beaten up. Back in uh, April, some teachers pushing sex values on your third grader. Why don't you go in and thrash the teacher? Here is July. If I find your kindergarten or kindergartner in the park and start talking to her about her sex life, you have a moral right to punch me out and call the cops. Why in the world are we allowing teachers to do the same thing again? Gender identity, orientation, this is not sex life but it's this conflation that he purposely makes to rile people up. Last thing here, in his la our last example, this is from, oh, today, <laughs> or yesterday. In a healthy country with an intact social fabric, neighborhood dads would give out instant justice to anyone who even thought about sexualizing their kids. So all those examples there, this is what he does. And it's very dangerous because of his platform, because of the fact that he is a very engaged, brainwashed audience. And you will likely see something come out of this just because of the kind of power that he has. Last thing here on who Tucker is. So he may not have many principles, may not have many care about any actual things. But one thing is consistent. He has always been a bigot. So the college Carlson attended confirms the authenticity of Carlson's 1991 college yearbook entry saying he was a member of the Jesse Helms Foundation and the Dan White Society. Dan White assassinated gay civil rights pioneer Harvey Milk in 1978. 
Jesse Helms, one of the most anti, one of the most active anti-LGBTQ senators in U.S. history, who said AIDS resulted from unnatural and disgusting homosexual behavior and ran racist campaign ads. Yeah, I'm not sure what else there is to say. Um, but look, it is important that we engage in topics like this when the right brings it up, because if we just run away, away from it and pretend it doesn't exist, then people like Tucker are the ones that run away with the narrative and that eventually get giant groups of people into hating entire communities based on, you know, one ridiculous example. It really is disgusting what Tucker does, but that's why you have to be aware of how he does it, how he breaks down these stories, how he reels people in and then lies to you to get people, at least in some cases here, in an attempt to try and commit violence.